Start recording. All right, let's go. Three, two, one. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Persuasion by the Pint. I am Jonathan Taylor, along with Sean McCool. Sean, today we're going to be talking about a book that we have, I think we mentioned this on uh, a couple of episodes back, but the book is called Fascinate, How yeah. to Make Your Brand Impossible to Resist. Um, I've just started going through this book about a week ago. I'm not completely through it, but I've got some stuff that I've underlined along the way and some things that I can pull away that I feel like are pretty applicable. I went to a big... Um, a uh, big trade show in our industry this week out in California. And um, I can use some, uh, some examples from this, from my own, from my own personal power, branding power from my podcast nice. to show how this is uh, very applicable and works so well. So yeah, and um, we'll, we'll touch on what she calls the, the seven triggers of uh, to get people to, yeah. make your brain impossible to ignore right so some of those Absolutely. triggers just as just let me throw out a little teaser here right <laughs> so some of those some give of us those a teaser triggers, lust lust Mystique. Ooh, that's yeah that's uh that's a deadly that's one of yeah. the deadly sins right yes <laughs> lust mystique alarm prestige yeah. power vice power. and power trust. power yes yes indeed so you got it's some a, Kind of what would be maybe negative sounding, you know, lust, yeah. alarm, vice. And then we got yes. the flip side. We got some mystique, some prestige, some power, some trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll talk about how kind of those get woven in to a brand message and um, some other cool takeaways. I read this book probably, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. I don't know when it came out, but I actually have That's a... Um, I can't believe I didn't never had it. And I, I was I know. just listening to a, uh, a pod, a recent podcast for, um, you know, Dan, the Dan Kennedy podcast that they, uh, Russell Brunson and, and his team have, I guess they're start they've been dripping these out since they purchased yeah. the GKIC, which is brilliant from on his, you know, for them. I think that was, yeah. that was such a great move. Like you said, he's just given so much good stuff away that uh, you can't help but tune in and and uh, you know hear yeah, the so, message. But this, so this was an interview from, with uh, with Sa what is her Sa Sally Sally, Sally Hogs Hogshead, Hogshead um, yeah. that Dan had some time ago when she's talking about this book. So it was pretty cool. I ordered it. Yeah, she uh, it came out in 2016. I happened to be on her list. I'm not sure how I found out about her, but I, mm -hmm. I was on her list when she launched the book. So I actually have a um, a galley copy too. That's kind of cool. It's like the a galley copy. Yeah. Was that like, was that it was like, I don't remember if it's signed or not, but that was like a, you know, VIP type bonus for something I, I got when I, and back then her quiz was free. Now it's like 59 bucks. Oh, really? For the brand quiz. That's amazing. That's good example. <clears throat> yeah. So I know my fascination brand, um, yeah. or what it used to be anyway. I don't, I'm not sure how much it's changed, but mm -hmm. so yeah, but it's a great book. So we'll, uh, We'll touch on that, but before we do, let's talk about some fascinating, hopefully fascinating beverages. Yeah, I'm excited today. This is a, I've got a brand new one from a familiar, uh, company that, uh, I think, I don't think, I think this is the first year I've ever seen this. So I'm excited to uh, give it a try. All right. What is it? Just go ahead. Roll with it. Roll with Okay. All right. So I'm gonna pull it up here. Uh, you know, you know, founders, obviously we've yes. had a number of their, their delicious brews on before this one is a French toast bastard. You know, they have the, uh, they have the bastard series. I sh yes. Should I say that bastard series? Um, they have the, <laughs> yeah, well, that's what it is. So. <laughs> the old bastard or the bat, the fat bastard, the whatever bastard. Yep. I mean, they've got like three or four bastards. Now they've got a French toast bastard. Um, and this one is an aged, uh, an ale aged in oak bourbon barrels with vanilla extract, cinnamon, and maple ex extract. Um, 11.1%, wow. uh, 50 IBUs. So, uh, yeah, um, that should be good. Yeah. It says backwoods. Uh, yeah, that's the other one. That was the backwoods bastard. 
It says Backwoods Bastard gets the full-fledged breakfast treatment. Uh, our malty and rich bourbon barrel aged scotch ale is introduced to the essence of a smooth maple, warm cinnamon, and notes of sweet vanilla Ugh. for an incredible decadent brunch-inspired sipper. I hope you <laughs> I hope you got a fork with that. Oh or at yeah, at least a spork. Be, you need a spork. <laughs> spork. <laughs> yes, give me the uh, the spork from good old KFC, and I can handle this. Yeah, well, that does <laughs> that does sound good. I'll, I'll be interested to see if it lives up to the to the hype of that. Um, Showcase some of the art. I love I love good Scotch ale though. That's, yes. Yeah, that looks got good. That, uh, looks like Gandalf with a <laughs> <laughs> hat or something. I don't know. All right. Well, I'm in uh, beverage number two of my four pack, which is Marty's Little Monsters. Ah, in uh, celebration Marty's of Little Monsters, October and Halloween yeah. coming Ooh. up. So, what is that? So, Pe peanut butter. So this is the Wicked Wolf, and it is peanut butter marshmallow cream blonde. Peanut butter marshmallow cream blonde. Whew, man, Eight percent alcohol. Here's the little wolf on the back and his mugshot. <laughs> uh, so. Mr. Wicked Wolf. Mr. Wicked Wolf. Man, peanut butter. That sounds really good right now. Uh, it does. Peanut butter and marshmallow. Peanut butter. And it's a, it's a cream blonde. So I thought it was going to be a little darker. So I may have picked the wrong glass, but it should be good. So yeah, All let's right. uh, cheers it up. Cheers it up. Man, I can smell it right off the top the peanut butter ones man you can smell it as soon as you bring it up to you oh mouth. yeah that's i love those you did you you get that strong smell right off the top oh that's that's good mine is good how good mm. i'll go ahead and jump yeah let's see how good go ahead what is your rating oh man that's it's a little rich, but in a good way. Um, definitely taste the peanut butter and the marshmallow. I can taste the marshmallow in there. Mm -hmm. Man, this is tough. I'm going to give this a 4.8. It is up there. One of the best. 4.8. Wow. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. It's a little rich. Yeah. So that would be the only thing holding it back from a perfect score. Yeah, I'm going to say the same with mine. It is it is definitely rich. It's very sweet, um, mm -hmm. but it's not bad. It's it's. I just I could only handle, I can only one. handle one of these. Yeah, exactly. And that this is it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's not the eleven percent. It is just the sweetness. Yeah. Uh, it is. It's it's, it's very it's like a dessert. Yeah, well, um, it's like a piece of French toast, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like somebody just poured you know half a <laughs> bottle of Aunt Jemima in here and. Uh, <laughs> sprinkled some powdered sugar on top there's exactly a whole bit by the exactly. way speaking of powdered sugar did you see the uh our georgia bulldogs you know they got a bye week this week mm -hmm. did you see that they got a treat this week for all their hard work they got a had funnel cakes and ice cream trucks come to the practice field oh man that is so cool i know right i mean can you imagine the amount of funnel cakes that those linemen <laughs> went through <laughs> Uh, those that's on average that's got to be at least four or five of those things just knocked down by a oh yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> those guys that are um those guys that are plus 320 320 yeah, that was pounds. a good day for the funnel truck company <laughs> for sure he, he had a very good day <laughs> so but yeah that was that was kind of cool on the tab of the university of georgia athletic department right there, here there you go <laughs> education at work that's right hey, you got to keep right. those big boys happy that's right. Well, that's one way to do it, man. Feed them. Get them, get them sugared up. Feed them. Yes. Give them, give them rocket fuel for the practice fill. Yep. All right. Well, let's jump in. Um, I wanted to start, you told me, you know, this is the book you wanted to cover. So uh, I pulled mine back out, but I was, I was kind of going back through and mm -hmm. I found a, um, a summary from our friends over at read it for dot me. Yeah. Um, I sent that over to you. I don't know if you got it or not, but share that yeah i you. got it last minute but i think i got on my phone here yeah i'm gonna um, pull that up so that's pretty cool but i wanted to like she kind of talks a little bit in the beginning of the book and i just wanted to share this 
and that is like what the word fascinate means. It's actually the history of fascinate. The word is actually pretty fascinating by itself. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. so it's actually goes back to like witchcraft and some other things. And like when people were burned at the stake in the Salem witch trials, they were accused of fascination. Yeah. So we're going to teach you how to be so fascinating that they'll want to burn you at the stake, I guess is what we're <laughs> doing today. But um, some of the, some of the definitions were to command the interest of, you know, that, that seems kind of about right. But mm -hmm. I thought this one was better to transfix and hold spellbound by an irresistible power. Ah, yes. Like I that's, love that. that's much more what, what we're talking about here with mm -hmm. fascinate is like people can't right. look away. They're so attracted to your brand. Right. So they can't look away. And mm -hmm. so that could be, um, you know, some examples are like Harley Davidson. Sure. Um, you know, some, some of the big brands that have this, this cult like following, I would, I would say click funnels is a fascinating brand at this point. Yes. They definitely have their core group of followers wearing my shirt today. Yep. Um, yep. So, you know, they got the cult cheer going on. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty good, but yeah, I thought that was a good definition to transfix and hold spellbound by an irresistible power. And we're going to talk today as we go through the book, what are the elements that make up that power? And then mm -hmm. Jonathan is going to give us real life application of how that shows up in the real world with his brand yeah. at a big industry conference. Yeah. So we got all the bases covered today. All the bases. I got some of the bases. Some of the bases anyway. They'll be they'll be more, more bases than the Braves had. <laughs> Where's my drums there? Dang it. <laughs> Dang it. Too slow. <laughs> uh, um yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh the the there we go. Dang it. Always go. slow on the trigger. Uh, makes it yep. funnier. Yep. They faltered uh big time so yeah so congratulations to the phillies the padres the yankees and the astros nope. Is that who's that's left? right that's right yeah congratulations to those none of whom i want to root for <laughs> but i think i'm go going for the padres uh -oh. just <laughs> we're Don't about to get him. a yeah well, i think she's listening so we're about to get a comment uh probably in the <laughs> Uh, just because I hate Bryce Harper, man. I'm just not a Bryce Harper fan, but I just. Oh, uh, <laughs> I am definitely going to get a comment. <laughs> oh, All well. right. So keep it to yourself, Tamara. Okay. All right. All right. So, yeah, let's talk. Jump in. Uh, what I'm curious, like the application between what you experienced this week and kind of what you read in the books. So I'm going to let you drive a little bit. Okay. Um, and uh, tell me kind of how you saw the overlap and what you learned this week. And kind of tell people where you were too. Yeah. So this week I was out at a, um, a trade show. It's like the, it's the composites industries, like it's their Super Bowl event oh, yeah. every year. And this year it was out in Anaheim, California at the Anaheim Convention Center. And so it is, um, you know, usually for a show like that, you're looking at for our industry, probably, you know, six, 7,000 attendees, you know, which. Wow. You know, for big. trade shows, actually pretty big, yeah, pretty large event. So, uh, a lot of companies exhibiting, a lot of um, demonstrations. You've got everything from three D printing, like companies like that are advertising huge three D printing machines, to you know, high performance aerospace type composite materials, advanced materials, all that stuff. You know, so it's like cool event where you're showcasing stuff, and then you got people with their ex exhibit booths, and um, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, to network, I had I was out there sponsored by the um, the 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 trade organization that the big trade manufacturing organization, and I was doing a series of podcast interviews with companies out there. But um, you know, I I going through this book, it 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 just it's just a reminder talking about you know power the essence of, of being assertive is is one of the sections that i gravitated power it says the language of confidence power leads the way with authority and confidence power always has plan moves with purpose and reaches its goals so part of that is sometimes a state of mind sometimes um you have to create that state of mind and being assertive uh and i one of the things that I outline 
here in the book going through the section on power um which I think everybody should go back through this. I mean, this is just a reminder of what you continually need to go back to. What is power? One of the hardest tasks of leadership is understanding that you are not what you are, but what you are perceived to be by others. Okay. Mm. Uh, I'm going to repeat that one more time. <laughs> Preach. Because <laughs> we all need this lesson. Yes. The, one of the hardest tasks of leadership is understanding that you are not what you are, but what, uh, but what you are perceived to be by others. And what I mean by that is not, not like trying to become somebody that you're not, but going full in on who you're supposed to be right with no hesitation and being assertive in that. And, you know, that whole saying, I always remember that whole saying is kind of fake it till you make it. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of truth in that. Everybody should be trying to fake it until they make it. Because if you don't, you, you're never going to get, I mean, you're never going to garner the respect, and, and, you know, and, and, you know, until you get there, you can't have the mentality. Well, when I get there, then I'll have the respect. Sometimes you right. just got to be faking it along the way as yeah, you learn and as you build credibility. <clears throat> yeah. I heard a, I had a great metaphor one time. Um, somebody who was trying to explain like fake it till you make it and people were like, yeah, but aren't you just lying? And you know, aren't you just lying to yourself? It's like, yeah, uh, a little <laughs> bit, but you know, you're always lying to yourself about something, right? right. Cause we don't remember very clearly, but he gave the example of when you go into a hotel and you want to get up to the 10th floor, you go in the elevator and you press number 10. Yeah. Even though you're not there yet, you're still on floor one, but you press <laughs> right. number 10. So are you lying? No, yeah. that's the destination. So that's, that's the destination. Start, that's what that's you right. start thinking about. That's what you, Good that's analogy. the thought yeah. in your mind is, oh, I'm going to floor 10. Right. And you are in that moment, but not exactly that moment. So you're still kind of right. lying. Right. But you're heading that Absolutely. direction. Yep. And I think um, that quote kind of means that, you know, let's say you're the CEO. Mm -hmm. So you're in a position of power. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't necessarily mean you have power over your people unless mm. they perceive it that way. Right. So if they perceive you as a loser, not worth following, it doesn't matter what your role is. Right. It doesn't matter who you are. They're not going to yep. follow you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got to, you've got to present it. And the example that I give is that, you know, you can't go in and just like, you know, from a podcast, I've built my composites weekly brand for six years. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, you go out to a show like this and there's still a lot of, you know, you're recognized as kind of by a lot of people in the industry It's like, oh, you do this. I remember I listened to your podcast show and I have people coming up to me and, you know, but this, but with that, there's still a lot of companies out there or a lot of people out there that still are not familiar with you, you know, sure. even though you've been doing your podcast. And so, you know, I made it a point to go out there, you know, with the intention you know, I had shirts printed up with logos, composites weekly. I was on point with, you know, that aspect of the brand had sales sheets printed up, obviously for advertising purposes that I would give out. Um, and then I was just very intentional about, you know, knowing what to say to every person that I ran into, you know, when I introduced myself, because basically one, you know, one of these, events, this, these types of events are just a, 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 a you know, a huge networking opportunity. Right. And so if you don't know what you're going to say, most of the time you only have like a certain amount of time. So you got to be prepared to say exactly what you do, what you offer, how you help companies out there. And so I was prepared, you know, in that when I would run into each company, say, you know, basically, hi, I'm the, uh, I'm the founder and owner of Composites Weekly. We do weekly podcast shows for the industry highlighting uh, different companies, their, uh, you know, what they do for the industry, how they're benefiting, how they're improving our industry. And we like promote them and the work that they're doing. And, uh, you know, we would like you to, you know, I'd love to interview you if you haven't been on the show and then highlight you. And then if you're interested in looking at, op you know, advertising or sponsorship opportunities, we can show you how you can grow your, you know, I can show you how you can grow your brand, you know, build your awareness from there. So, you know, those, uh, quick conversation that 
you know, you have right there on the fly. And most of the people, you know, if you're assertive and know what you have to say, you go up to walk right up to people and say, Hey, you have a few minutes. I'd love to interview you over here. And I had like a little booth and everything set up at, at uh, cam X where I just kind of bring people over. I had a, a bunch of people that I had scheduled a bunch of companies that I had scheduled in advance. And that's another thing you want to kind of, it's like, you fill the pipeline of people because, and so then you, you're showing people that are, you know, up at your booth interviewing. So I yeah. kind of prepared it, you know, to kind of like see, you know, seeding that time space of having people, but then leaving gaps where I could pull people in and then talk to people at various times. So yeah, it's kind of like nobody wants to, to eat at an empty restaurant. Empty, right? Exactly. Exactly. So you got to have people right up there. So I made sure to have that, those time slots filled with people that would come up, but then I would keep little spots open throughout the, throughout the day and then some time in the afternoon. And, and usually I would use obviously the scarcity approach of saying, listen, we only have certain times available. Um, if we, you know, if you'd like to interview, you can come over here. And uh, we've got a few minutes available, but it's amazing how, you know, you come at it from a position of power to say, I'm the, I'm the founder and owner of composites weekly, and I'm interviewing people and I've looked at what you guys are doing. I think you might be a good fit. If you're, you know, if you'd like to, we can give you some free, you know, some publicity, you know, for your company. And people are like grateful. I mean, I had CEOs coming up to me of, pretty large companies, just grateful for the opportunity to just talk for 10 minutes, you know, yeah. but it's how you position yourself and, you know, you hand them some information, show them what your stats are, what your numbers are. And, you know, it, and it's not, you know, I've used to, it's like for the last six years, you know, up to a certain point of building this audience that I had, it was kind of faking it to you make it in some degree. It's still, there's still a lot to that, but once you position yourself as the industry expert and the industry's number one podcast show, which is another thing. It's like the industry's leading podcast show. I put that on everything that I do. Yes. I don't know if I'm the leading, you know, I'm not the, well, I am, I'm the one that does it on a regular basis, but I've claimed that title just by claiming it. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of like, uh, all the cell phone companies, right? Yeah. They all, they all say this, they're leading in some <laughs> quite, I mean, just a little different category. Right. And it's kind of like, um, who is it? JD power. Yeah. Like how has every car got a JD power award? Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. 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 Cause, Cause they, they just, pay for it. Yeah. And they keep making new categories. It's like, sure. Oh, best, uh, best leather seats in a, in giant sport utility class. Right. <laughs> something right. like that, you know, just, just, well, we, we can make something up for you. Yeah. Um, but people respond to that and it works. So, right. Oh yeah, to. absolutely. It's all marketing. And pe people are attractive. What I notice is people are, are, are extremely attracted to assertiveness. Yeah. Uh, assertiveness really attracts. So you go out there and you say, listen, here's what I need. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what we're set up to do out here at this event. And I need you, you know, if you can give me 10 minutes of your time and here's the time that I have available, I can, you know, we can feature you guys. No one would say no to that. No, I mean, no. no one at the event would say no. They're like, most of the time, if they couldn't meet that time, they'll say, do you have any time for later today or, yeah. or something like uh, this? Because we want, we don't want to miss this opportunity. Yeah, that's cool. So it's amazing how you, you just, you know, if you've been timid, if you had just like, you know, we're just, we just you know, going about it a different way um, and not created that assertive effect of the, 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 you know, creating that power, that confidence. Uh, or, or like we see yeah. so many people at trade shows do, they just sit in their booth and oh you know, man, they're yes. on their phone or they're just standing people around with talking pocket, in the booth. People, yes, oh yeah, I, I, you'd be amazed. I mean, just walk down the the uh, the halls of this show just to see the companies with representatives with people just hands in their pockets, not doing a thing. You know, it's like crazy. Yeah, such you know, waste. not not trying to pull somebody in. Hey, come over here. Let me let me show you something. Yeah. You know, or, or, or just, you know, with something that kind of breaks up the pattern, you know, that pat has that pattern interruption, you know, you've got to create pattern interruption out there. And one thing that I had is I had this big booth and I had all this equipment going on. Like no one else was doing this. I had cameras, I had a camera, you know, for live streaming. I had mics, I had the sound mixer, the thing that I'm using here. 
yeah, right there. And it was intentionally at the center. There was this thing called Park Place. It's a park place. It's a media room. And I was kind of like towards the center of it. So people would kind of walk through and they could see they were fascinated. Like, yes, because I would have well, somebody that's... interviewed. I would be interviewing somebody and they would be fascinating. And I have people walk by and take pictures. Let's all randomly take pictures of that's me cool. interviewing people. That's actually that's actually <laughs> one of the triggers. That's uh that's mis- yeah. kind of mystique, right? So yes. trigger number two that she talks about is called mystique. Right. And it's that curiosity, right? That people mm-hmm. gotta they're not sure exactly what's going on, exactly <laughs> what's true. And that sure. is very fascinating to people. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um in the summary here, it starts out, it says trigger number two mystique is Barack Obama really an American? Does Red Bull <laughs> really contain bull testicles? Mm. And does Lady Gaga have man parts? Yeah. We don't know the answers to these and many other questions. And as it turns out, we'll continue to be fascinated for as long as we don't have the answers. <laughs> True. Yeah. You know, so inquirer type stuff. But yeah, just just being in a room like that. And here's a guy, you know, got a whole podcast studio right in the middle oh, yeah. of the room. Like that's yeah. There's there's some mystery about that. Like, sure, whose podcast is it? Is right. it you know <laughs> like what what do they talk about? Right, who's going to be on the show? Like, yeah. there's so much power in that. Right, of that mystery. Um, yep. Another couple they talked about was like, um, I love this phrase. You you know, especially for us Gen Xers. Remember how Dukes of Hazard would always end or go to a commercial break with Bo and Luke Duke stuck in the middle of a car chase? Like, oh yeah, yeah. Like right when they go over the ramp or they're about to crash into the river, <laughs> it like freezes and the voiceover comes back. It's like, yeah, oh, they're gonna make it this time. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And then cuts away, it keeps you kind of yeah on the edge, right? Yeah. Now HGTV and all the all sure. the uh, all the show network shows that have like you know the contest shows the the way they wait to reveal the answers or the winners oh, no. or whatever. Oh, just uh, like, absolutely. That's so it's frustrating pain, too. If you're painfully watching painfully long pauses. Yeah. Well, they pan every single person in the crowd yeah. or whatever. It's like, but it, it works. Like you don't turn yeah. away while you're waiting no. for that answer. No, no matter how and much you're just trying, you're trying to guess and you're, yeah. you're, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, it keeps you, keeps you wondering. Yes. Yeah, like which house are they going to pick on house hunters? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> it's like, I gotta yep. know. Yep. I should have gone to bed three episodes ago, but I exactly. gotta know. Exactly. So yeah. So mystique is good power. Uh, what's mm-hmm. another one that caught your attention as you were reading? Um, that's really the, the, the big one. I mean, trust is another one. Uh, yeah. the language of stability. Um, you know, people love, you know, brands that are trustworthy, stable. And yeah. one of the things that I would tell to people like that, that were unfamiliar that didn't know, like, I mean, there's a lot of people, I mean, the industry is huge. So there's a lot of people that knew who I was automatically, but there's also a lot of people that like, this is their first time, but I would tell them, Oh yeah, we've been, um, composites weekly. We've been around, we've been doing this show for about seven years now. And usually they're, you know, that's like stability. Okay. Oh, you've right. been doing this a long time. Uh, here's what our numbers are on a regular basis, you know, on a monthly download basis, you know, we're getting, you know, 3,500 downloads a month, which for an industry, for a niche industry is incredible. Yeah. And, um, you know, just, you know, highlighting some of the things that kind of build that trust into your brand. Like, okay, you've been around, you're not like, somebody that just started a podcast and did two episodes and like <laughs> nothing, you're not doing anything else. You know, you, yeah. you see a lot of that. You're like, I just started a podcast, you know, and you do one episode and I've seen a lot of those Johnny come lately. They come in, they try to do a podcast and they'll do two or three episodes and it's like, that's it. Yeah. You know, that's their content. So yeah. Trust is big. I mean, that's what, you know, the fortune 500 thrive on as their yeah. trigger Yep, is trust, you know, um, you know, we colors, can help mm-hmm. with trust. A lot of the blues and things like yep. that are very trustworthy. Consist- yep, exactly. But yeah, consistency is a big part of trust. Like, you know, McDonald's, like, you know, when you go to McDonald's, what you're going to get. There's a trust factor there. Yeah. That even though it may not be good for me, mm-hmm. I know that, but I also know that I can pull up there and in five minutes, I can be stuffing my face and absolutely killing yeah. the hunger in my, in my stomach, right. no right. matter where I'm at in the world. Yep. It's going to be basically the same. You mm-hmm. know, there's a few different menu items in different countries, but sure. If I'm running through the airport, I'm like, 
I don't know what these other weird <laughs> restaurants are in the airport, but I know what McDonald's is. <laughs> and it's why it's always the busiest. I exactly. Because people know it's not some local chain. Like it's a worldwide chain that everybody, when I went to Guatemala a few years back mm -hmm. and I had a layover that I missed my flight and I ended up having to stay overnight. I didn't know where to go eat. And I saw the yep. golden arches and I was like, yes. Yep. Absolutely. And, uh, it's and, no uh, brainer. Yeah. It was, I, I could order even, even though I didn't know Spanish because I'd just say number uno. <laughs> I knew, I knew the, the yep. meal number, right? So I could oh, just pick exactly. the meal number. You pretty much have to speak and that's in all, Spanish. Those are all types of trust <laughs> yep. that we depend on. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that at the um, John Wayne, John Wayne airport in SNA, right in uh, Orange County. That's yeah. where I flew out of. Oh, that's the worst airport. Yeah, it's it's that, it's not a huge airport at all. Oh, that's not. Oh, okay. I haven't been. I was thinking L.A. L.A. is terrible. No, L.A. Yeah, I didn't fly into L.A. I flew into Orange County. Yeah, um, kind of a smaller airport, but yeah. Um, but yeah, and not a whole lot of options. But I did. I ended up eating. There was a McDonald's right across from my gate. Yeah, and that's where I ate lunch on. Uh, yeah, because you, you know, know what you're going to get. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Bingo. Let's and then when I got to Dallas, I hit up. Salt Lake. I had yes. to have some Salt Lake oh. there, man. <laughs> you sent me that text. I was like, oh, I'm jealous. Man, it yeah. was good. Because it, it's a good drive from us for the closest Salt Lake. So, yeah. Um, we've got. Oh, absolutely. Best, too many. In my opinion, best brisket I've ever had. Some of the best brisket I've ever had. Wow. So. That's tough because there's some good brisket around here. There so. is a, some good brisket, and but that was just amazing. Well, let's talk about a couple of the other ones since we yep. teased them. Um, okay. Vice. I do. I do want to mention real quick before we jump yeah. into that, the whole idea too. Um, and I've underlined this. Do you remember? I don't know if you were you a big Seinfeld watcher back in the day. Of uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't have them memorized like some people, but yeah, um, I loved. I always loved the Soup Nazi. Yes, right? the Soup Nazi episode. You remember yeah, that? So classic. he talks about the Soup Nazi. Um, that people that are so good at what they do. Um that they don't need, you know, they don't need affirmation. Um, so it talks about, let's see, let me go to this section here. Um, it says, uh, psychologist David Stewart explains in the article, people value praise when it comes from people who don't give it out easily. People mm -hmm. go to the restaurants in search of both modest risk and approbation, uh, perhaps in form of a uni handle. I don't know what he means that by there, but the whole, the whole idea behind that is, um, you know, people wanted to like, I, I remember the soup Nazi episode where he basically berate people that didn't follow the rules, yeah. uh, in order just the right way. But, yeah. um, and he didn't hand out praise. He would, you know, it was, it was like follow the rules, but he had amazing, you know, the product was amazing. I mean, like the, yeah. the soup was out of this world. Well, so people would come there and they didn't want to get, in his bad graces and get kicked out because yeah, <laughs> it was like they it. were so afraid of yeah. never being allowed to come back to the soup kitchen, the soup Nazi kitchen, because it was the best soup in the world. Yeah. Another thing that that reminds me of is um, Simon Cowell. Yes. When he yep. was on, yep. uh, you know, when he started out, he was the one that was just like straight with you and told you that wasn't good or whatever. Right. And you could see, time and mm -hmm. to this day even on america's got talent or whatever people respect his opinion more than all the other judges absolutely because he didn't give it out like, liberally he didn't give yeah. it out like on a regular basis and all the other liberal. ones are trying to be like politically correct and like sure. you know pull back a little bit with harshness he's like honestly that was dreadful you know yeah. it's like right right and they're like cool thank you um so yeah, you can, you can gain a lot of respect by just being open and honest with people. And that's, you know, that, that builds trust. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think there's a, there's a, it's, it goes back to the scarcity or the, you know, I think that mindset of just like lack of availability. If you, you know, treat people, you know, I don't know that you want to treat people poorly, but you don't just, you limit the amount of praise that you give, but you do give it. Um, it really does create more value in what you, you know, what you have to give. So, 
Yeah, so I love some of these other triggers. So I want to make sure that we uh, cover them. Sure. And one of them is vice. It's like, mm. well, how do you how do you use vice and like marketing and positioning and right. to get people to like your brand? And one of the things they they talk about it's it's things we know we shouldn't do, but still just might do. Sure. So I think a good current day example, and this wasn't in the in the book, so I don't I don't remember it being in the book. But I think Netflix is a good example of a vice that they've capitalized on the whole idea of Netflix and chill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which Netflix and chill. <laughs> I mean, that's a vice, right? It's like right. sit yeah. around on my couch, eat, watch movies. Like that's, yeah. that's kind of vice like. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the, it says in the, in the summary here, one of the most powerful things you can do is create taboos. Yeah. So how do you, how do you create things that seem like a little like, not allowed to get people talking about you and what you do. And mm -hmm. I love the acronym WWMD. What would Madonna do <laughs> <laughs> for our Gen X people? And uh, especially because that was when she was at the, at the, oh, at the yeah. top. Right. Um, but I mean, Trump would be another example, like stirring the pot. Um, you know, a lot of, the, and you see a lot of the personalities, especially in the political world now, the way they, they want to take a stand one way or the other. And, um, but yeah. yeah, if you can, if you could come up with some type of vice, here's an, here's an example. Some, one of the, they gave, what if you were a mattress company and named your pillow top mattress, the Sunday morning sleep in, mm. right? We all know we're not supposed to sleep in on Sundays <laughs> because there's so much work to do around the house or you got to go to sure. church, but right? We still just might do it anyway. If the mattress is comfortable enough. Right. Mm. So, so just those little things. So it doesn't have to be like, Hey, snort cocaine with me. Like <laughs> that doesn't have to be your tagline. It can right, be just right. like a little bit taboo and a little bit outside your avatar's comfort sure. zone. Yeah. Yeah. And to make them feel just a little bit naughty about yeah. <laughs> what you're doing and, and that sure. they're doing it with your product. Right. Right. Or service in that matter. Um, oh, that's great. And then, so we talked about power prestige. I like this one. Um, I think this one's pretty powerful as well. Prestige is just kind of that upper end feel, you know, I think, um, some of the people that do this really well, I mean, I think, I think in the start Starbucks kind of used prestige, mm -hmm. um, some others, you know, a lot of alcohol companies try to hit this, right. The, the mm -hmm. top shelf, if you can be a top shelf liquor company, you're, that's prestige, right. Gray goose. Right. Right. Um, you know, they, they came out and they were double the price of most vodkas, right? right. Their Smirnoffs yep. or those kinds yep. of just standard stuff. Starbucks did the same thing. I mean, if you really think oh, back yeah. to Starbucks, we were paying, you know, a dollar 50 for, or, you know, 89 cents for coffee at, at, uh, you know, the local convenience store or McDonald's. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they immediately pushed that up to $4. Now it's five, mm -hmm. $6. Mm -hmm. Um, and everybody's coffee prices have gone up, including McDonald's. You know, they have those Absolutely. machines yeah. now that right. make all the different kind of, it's like a barista, barista robot. Yeah. Makes all those things. Um, the other way you can do prestige is limit availability. Yep. Um, you see all the, you know, the handbag, I was going to say purse, but it, I think they're handbags, not purses. Mm -hmm. Uh, the high end handbag companies right. and how there's, you know, waiting lists for those. And you have to Ferraris the same way. You can't just walk in the showroom and buy a Ferrari. You have to, yeah. a lot of times you have to buy a used one first or a pre-owned first. Absolutely. And work your way up. I mean, mm -hmm. that's all prestige that really adds to the value of your brand. Yeah. Um, another one is alarm. So, the campaign they talk about in the book, it was the old war on drugs and this is your brain on drugs. You remember that ad from the oh, yeah, 80s sure or 90s? The egg. Yeah, the egg and the frying <laughs> pan. It's like, this is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. Crack yep. sizzle. Right. You know, right. It's very effective. Like that was, well, I don't know if the campaign was effective. It was effective image. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty of argument to say that the actual campaign hasn't been that effective, if not made it worse. So, but the alarm is there. It's like, Oh my God. And I think there's a lot of, you know, we see this kind of stuff more and more. 
um, today because it it's required to stand out. It's a pattern interrupt of sorts. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, so like got milk is actually mentioned in the book. Like, Oh my God, if you're out of milk, that's a bad thing. Like, what are you yeah. going to eat? Your, what are you going to dip your cookies in? If you don't have right. a fresh right. supply of milk in the fridge, yep. that would be tragic. Yep. So just little things like that. So it doesn't have to be like <laughs> over the top, like a financial newsletter where you're, you're telling people the stock market's going to crash and right. you know the end of the world's coming. It can be simple as something as simple as got milk. Yeah. Oh God, do you know what happens if you run out of milk? Your <laughs> cookies are just going to be cookies. <laughs> yeah. No dipping. Yeah, what are you going to bake with? What are you going to, yeah, like, I mean, your teenager is- drink that by the, uh, yeah. you know, like five gallons a day. So yeah. what are they going to do? They're going to shrink you- to nothing. Yeah. You probably buy your, your milk in five gallon buckets at this point. My youngest just <laughs> gulps it down. I mean, it's a gallon every two days. I, it feels like, but I know in high school, I, I drank a gallon a day. Yeah, I mean, exactly. But we didn't have sodas. We didn't, you know, we just, that's all we drank pretty much. Right. Milk and yeah. iced tea. Yep. Cause we had a tea company. So that was, we drank a lot of tea. So <laughs> alarm is another one. Um, Going back to the, Prestige. I want to mention yeah. um, one thing that I you, you can get ideas like from this. It's great to borrow ideas. If you want to g- borrow um, ideas from this realm, a great. Let me just mention a great uh, magazine to pick up is a copy of the Rob Report. Are you, oh, yes. I'm sure you've picked that up because oh, yeah. that's like high in everything. Like, yeah, I mean it's like for the ultra wealthy who have nothing else to um, <laughs> spend their money on. Yes. <laughs> but you can get some really good ideas from some of the ads in the Rob report on. Yeah. You know, if when you, when you're flipping through there and there's hundred thousand dollar watches, <laughs> Gulfstream jets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bentley's, you know, yeah. It's yeah, a different so, world. Yeah. So it's good to just peruse that, pick it up, take home a copy and just look at what the, wealthy are spending their money on and, and the type and how of imagery they positioned. use yeah all that kind of stuff right yep yeah no that's a great tip yep. um i thought there was another one like that oh i think it was unique homes magazine back in the day i don't know if that's mm-hmm. still around or not uh, we talked a little bit about mystique already and then the last one is lust oh man that's a dangerous one we gotta save the best for last <laughs> says, if you trigger lust, you will draw others closer and keep them wanting more. Mm. Lusting isn't just about physical attraction. It's about anything that you crave. So how do you get people to crave you? You know who comes to mind in this, especially probably five years ago, not necessarily today's marketing, but who who tried the lust angle? Yeah. Hardee's. Ooh. Oh yeah. I remember those you commercials remember those campaigns with the, uh, with the, the sensuous the, model that, uh, yeah. I didn't notice the, the model. I just noticed the burger. <laughs> yeah, sure you did. I know you did. Right. <laughs> yeah. But the, you know, they went with a very, and they got a lot of flack for that, but they also knew they their did. customer base. Sure. Yeah. Cause their customer base is the, is the contractor who's stopping by Hardee's for lunch with a trailer behind his, like if you go to right. any Hardee's right. at lunchtime, there's like six landscaping trailers in the parking lot mm-hmm. and everybody inside is wearing construction clothes of some kind. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like that's their market. So they kind of knew that that was their market and of course it just, was, they just went for it. They're like, you know, yeah, <laughs> these are, these are, you know, burly guys that, you know, they want are, big burgers with, yeah, all, you know, blue collar. They, they know what they want and yeah. they also have like, they, this is the kind of food that they eat. Mm-hmm. They need this kind of caloric intake, but they also, <laughs> in the same sense, uh, we kind of know what they like on the on on the other side too, right? Yeah. I mean, um, so, so yeah. How can you tease and flirt? Yeah. With your with your customers, right? right. In a in a way that is not actually teasing and flirting. So let's be clear there. I mean, I guess <laughs> some brands you could do that. Um, yeah. So how do you how do you like how do you bring a little lust into your brand? And it's not for everybody. Like if, if that feels really, really awkward to you, then you probably yeah. shouldn't try it. Yeah. And some brands, it, it's just not going to fit, but sure. you know, you can certainly ask yourself, like, is there something about my product or service that's lust worthy? And if mm-hmm. so, what would it be? And how would I pull that out? And sure. And like I said, go back and just look at lust, lustful 
Hardy's commercials and you'll probably find mm-hmm. the video yeah. we're talking about. GoDaddy did that too back in the day. Absolutely. When they were launching, they used a lot of yeah. that, you know, sexual innuendo type stuff. Absolutely. Uh, so they had uh, what Dana, Danica Patrick and yeah. uh, a few other uh, I mean, Hooters. Celebrities. I mean, yeah. you know, Hooters has, has made a living off that. Yep. Right? Oh, and you can look at car commercials too. I mean, yeah. sometimes it's kind of. Yeah, that's a good uh, point. Like, even if they don't have models, like the the lines mm-hmm. and the way they, you know, they yeah. the way they do silhouettes of the curves of a sports car. Sure. Yeah. It's all lust. Right. right? Yep. Because they're it, just attractive females stepping out of the vehicle. You know, yeah. You know, maybe it's not like you know an inadvert i mean maybe it's not like right directly but yeah sometimes it's inadvertently or secondary yeah. And- yeah so it's little things like that so you know so let's just real quick i'll review them so the seven triggers are lust mystique uh, alarm prestige power mm-hmm. vice and trust and you can actually go over to um, howtofascinate.com and there's a quiz, a test that you can take about your brand. And about, I think there's both like for your brand um, and yourself to see mm-hmm. what your fascination triggers yeah. are. Right. Um, and they're like 59 bucks and you, you basically end up with a, this is the grid. Um, let me see if I can get it to, there's a whole grid right here that -hmm. comes up and it, you, you, you end up with two fascination triggers. And then they, when they combine, they create kind of this unique archetype for you. Right. Right. Like mine last time I took this, which has been a while ago was Mm -hmm. prestige and mystique, which is called the architect. Okay. Um, so those are the, and it, it kind of gives you an idea of like what colors you should be using, what types of fonts, you, what types of, um, uh, types of, um, illustrations and pictures and things like that you should be taking. So it's a very interesting quiz. And to me, it's worth the money sure. to just go ahead and, um, take that. And then here's, um, Sally Hogshead is the author. Here's her site going with the old reverse type. I love oh, that yeah. she's that for a woman to just embrace the hog's head as a, I know. as a logo. Is I really, know with the logo, with the hog. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> it's crazy. That's kind of power right there. It's like, yeah. 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 I know I got a weird name and I'm embracing <laughs> every bit of it. Right. So I thought that was, I've always thought that was cool about her that she didn't try to like hide her name. Cause it, it's yeah. a weird name. It's a little yeah, bit weird. It is. Um, and for a woman that, you know, it may be yeah. different for a, for a male, but for yeah. a female, they might like more, I mean, they might be more prone to shy away from that than a guy, yeah. you know. And she just braced it, which I love that. And it is yeah. memorable, so it's smart to go Absolutely. ahead and brace it. Right. Um, but yeah, she's got some great, um, great YouTube videos. If you, you know, there's some TED talks out there with her stuff. Sure. So definitely yeah. worth checking out. Check out the book. Yeah. Um, there's Jeffrey Gettimer. A little, yeah. A little plug from. Yeah. Yeah. All the big names have have endorsed her uh, mm-hmm. at some point. Yeah. There's the logo there. Um, yeah, she's she advises a lot of big companies now. Um yeah. all based on one, this one little simple framework, which is its own lesson in and of itself. Right. Yeah. It's good, good stuff. stuff. Yeah. Anything it's a else? great book. Uh like I said, I'm half just over halfway through it. Um so I haven't covered all the bases, but it's definitely a good good read. Yeah. yeah. Very good read. It's a beefy book i don't know 300 page 250 300 yeah. pages something like that um uh, but yeah it is good and yeah there's uh yeah there's the chart in the back on the spine it's got all the different combinations yep. exactly and like it's different like you if you're because it'll give you a primary and a secondary fascination when you do the report yeah so you could be prestige and then mystique and that's different than mystique and then prestige right as far as like your <clears throat> your, your final thing so right if you love personality tests, that's another one to take. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Give you something else to think about. Yeah. It's very inexpensive and, and worth probably worth the time. I need to check that out myself. Yeah. And you want to, you want, when you're doing it, you want to make sure you're thinking about either your brand or yourself, you know, depending yep. on what sure. type of business you have. Cause obviously your brand may be a little bit different than yourself, depending on yeah. 
how things are set up. So, yep. um, yeah, very cool. Very cool. Anything yeah. I, no, it's, I, I gotta, I gotta repeat that one more time though. Um, cause that's to me, that was worth like the whole point of the book was just a reminder on power. Yeah. One of the hardest tactic, one of the hardest tasks of leadership is understanding that you are not what you are, but what you are perceived to be by others. And <clears throat> I had a sales, a VP of sales years ago for a company I worked with told me that perception is reality. We've all heard that saying, but yep. he reminded me perception is reality. So it's what people perceive, not what, you know, what you want them to, th I mean, what you want them to think sometimes it, it's about their perception. So you have to, uh, you know, sometimes power is assuming that you're someone that you may not be at the time, but that's okay. Cause you, like you said, Sean, you're on elevate, you're on floor one, but just cause you're on floor one doesn't mean you're not moving. <laughs> you're not yeah. moving in the direction of floor number 10. Yeah. Right. Well, so. and you're, you know, for you, it may not be power for other people. It, it may be the mystique. It may be prestige that that's how people perceive you. Right. And if you don't know right. that, right. And you're trying to be all powerful over here and give all this power elements. Yeah. When actually you're much more of a mystique person mm -hmm. and it's going to fall flat. So that's really sure. what the quiz does. It, it kind of helps you see how other people see you. Right. So you have a natural, what she calls them, fascination advantage mm -hmm. um, that makes you impossible to resist. And the more you can hone in on those things, what they are, uh, the better off you'll be and the easier your marketing will be. Yeah. Absolutely. So here's some takeaways. Pick up this book if you haven't read it. Fascinate. Yep. Uh, Sally Hogshead. You know, if you haven't, if you've never picked up a copy of the Rob Report, you go to any bookstore. You can pick that up in the magazine section. You can yeah. see exactly what prestigious brands, how they advertise. I mean, these are people that are are advertising to the uh, the ultra wealthy, right? Yep. These are the guys buying the Lear jets and the, you know, and the uh, Brunswick yachts. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. So also I wanted to mention real quick, um, I got a cool little, I want to do a little plug real okay. quick before we wrap up. It's on a little, it's a little device that I used. It's Did called you a to share your screen. Huh? Yeah. Well, I was going to hold it. Yeah. Okay, I, I, just make... I didn't pull up a share. I just got a box. <laughs> <laughs> Old school. Here we go. Let's see. There you go. This is a Zoom uh, FTBT. It's a field recorder, and it has Bluetooth capabilities. Okay. So this is a little recorder. It's like um, it's a little handheld recorder. I wish I had it. I, I meant to just bring it onto the set, but... I left it, but I brought the box. Um, I bought this a couple of weeks ago and uh, right before the trade show, because I knew I would be out um, and about sometimes not only in my element where I'm set up to do podcasting, but I would be walking the floor, sometimes talking to people. And this is like a little, uh, little micro recorder that you're keeping and you're, it's like a lapel mic. You're hooking it up to your uh, shirt yeah. And you just hook it, you know, you clip it in or you stick it in your pocket. It's a little pocket recorder. You can record and the lapel mic, it's amazing. It sounds incredible. It's like the best audio I've ever probably I've ever heard from a, a lapel microphone. Wow. So you can you can be very like if you're at like a big event or something like that and you're interviewing people and you don't want to have like a you know, a huge microphone, like you're, you know, it's very intimidating. Yeah. You just go up to them with this little recorder and I had it really, you know, you have it really look subtly hit, you know, hid from, you know, they can't see it, but it's a little clipped microphone. You can go up there, talk to people. And you just have them talk into the little lapel mic and it picks up the, the sound like amazingly. So wow, that's cool. It's a great little uh, device that you have. Like if you're, you know, at events or something, and you want to interview people on the spot, pick up some content uh, for your podcast or for whatever you're doing. It's a great way to do it. 
be a great way to record some stuff too. Like if you're driving or, uh, out walking or anything, I guess. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Get a little bit higher quality than maybe what you get on your, your iPhone or whatever. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah. You would get, um, if you're out walking in the neighborhood and just want to record content, um, it, like I said, it Bluetooth into your phone. Uh, you have to download the app, but it, you can Bluetooth it right to your phone. So you don't have to, you know, have any hard connections into your iPhone or whatever. You just Bluetooth it um, automatically. It syncs with your phone. You can record audio. You can, I, I think you can do video as well, hmm. but uh, I was, you know, I was mostly cool. using it for audio. So yeah, that's cool. I have to check that out. Yeah. So good stuff. Um I've got a stack of stuff starting to grow here, but we don't have time today. So pretty, you know, next show or two, we're going to do a little random show. Got some okay. direct mail and some things like that that have been piling up on my desk. Okay. A couple pieces that offended me that I want to talk uh -oh. about. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll save that for another show. Throw that out there. Um, okay. Yeah. I got some, some interesting stuff um, that we can talk about on the, on the next, another episode, but yeah, this is good. Fascinating okay. by Sally, Sally Hogshead. Go check it out. Um, check out our show page at persuasionbythepint.com. Absolutely. And, uh, I guess, Jonathan, maybe you'll put a link to that Zoom recorder on there as well. Yeah. I'm trying to pull it. I'm going to, like, I'm going to share the screen right now because I, okay. I wanted, like, outside of the box, I wanted to hold up the thing, but I forgot to bring it. So I'm going to share this. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Share. All right, here we go. Share screen. All right. There we go. There we go. So I, that is the Zoom F2 B2 or BT, I'm sorry, Lavalier recording mic. Great little product if you're just trying to, and it includes a, you can use it with a little micro SD card. So if you want to oh, cool. record content on the go, like if you're at a big event, and really get want to get some feedback or if you're like you said sean out just doing a stroll around the neighborhood and want to record some stuff with your phone and you would just want great audio without all the background noise yeah it's a great little recorder 170 cool. bucks so that's very cool yep yeah, and we'll bucks. uh include the uh the link here on the show page for this very one. cool yeah. yeah that could be handy for especially if you're in the car a lot and driving and you want to do podcasts from your car type oh, yeah. stuff, man, that'd be great for that. Yep. So, yeah, I cool. was just thinking, you know, traveling sometimes, you know, you think of uh, opportunities or ideas that come to your mind when you're mm -hmm. traveling, you don't want to pull out a recorder. You just click that thing when you got it hooked, you know, lapel hooked in, Yeah. you get that out. It sounds like I said, the, the audio for a lapel microphone just yeah. sounds incredible. So yeah, they make good stuff. Zoom, uh, Yep, different than the sure. zoom recording company yep zoom video but yep uh, or is it are they the same company or are they different their logo uh, the looks zoom, very the, similar yeah I th those are two separate companies yeah. amazingly so i'm i'm surprised there's not any <laughs> lawsuits going right now i mean uh yeah. back and forth between those two but yeah yeah they've uh, zoom the zoom uh you know conferencing platform is a little different from the zoom uh recording Audio. products yeah, yeah. That's that's but, pretty funny. So, but I like both. They're, yeah, they work they're both well. Good. <laughs> both good. All right. Well, that's a wrap. I'll let you uh, let you yeah. close it out. To all of our listeners, you can find us over at persuasionbythepint.com. You can find us on all your podcast platforms: Stitcher, Radio, Spotify. Um, we're on Twitter. We're back on Twitter now. Um, I, Twitter had a little glitch with Streamyard there for a little bit, but I think looks like that's been fixed yeah, so it looks cool. like we're back on uh we're back on twitter uh, we now have a twitch profile yeah. <laughs> we're so cool and of course you can visit our page on amazon or you can just visit our website at persuasionbythepint.com if you have questions or comments you can email us at uh persuasionbythepint at gmail.com and uh, sean it's been fun man we'll see yeah. you all next week see ya all right.